two other ways that I can think of that we could be uh, adding in cost. So do you remember when we talk about variables? Let's say the dumper truck, and we didn't want to use, for some reason, we didn't want to use the price per widget and the quantities. If we wanted to use a different um, method of working out the cost of a dumper truck, and we, we had that variable table. So let's just bring up the variable table. So let's say um, the variable A, let's rename that to type of dumper. And the base price is going to be 3000. But actually, someone says, do you know what? This is the 2020s. Um, we don't have to use old school dumper trucks. We can use brand new ones that are electric. So we might have a situation where we want to instead use a discrete distribution and you could add as many different scenarios in here as you want, but we'll just go with two. So the probability that we use a traditional dumper is going to be 60% and the value of that is just going to be uh, 100%. So as in the $3,000, uh, whereas there's going to be a 40% chance that actually we're going to try out a brand new dumper truck, but it's going to cost double. So it's going to be 200%, so i.e. 6,000. So that's the variable that we're going to use. So hit OK. Now we're going to just look at formulas for a moment. So if we click on, so we're still on dumper truck, but we're now down here on the formula window. If you want to build a formula up, you have to reference other parts of the model is uh, potentially what you're going to want to do. So you build up a reference table and what we're specifically looking to have is a symbol. And once we have a symbol, we can write it in to the base price or the quantity as required. So let's say we go to uh, the variable table, click that, there's the type of dumper, click OK. Symbol is type of dumper. We could just shorten that to the word type. And then our, that's going to work out our base price. Type. So notice that doing that has changed 3000 to 3000. However, it is now greyed out. It's greyed out and I, if I double click or any clicks, I can't do anything to that. I can't edit it because it is receiving its instructions from the formula, which is down here. And down here is receiving it from the variable table in this case. Now, type could also, because it's now a formula, I can now put plus, I don't know, 500 pounds because there's some kind of disbursement fee to, um, that you have to pay on top of. Um, or I could open up brackets and then start putting in anything else. So formulas are very powerful because it allows you to take control of how things are being worked out. Now, notice also that we could put still, uh, you can't, can no longer, sorry, put a, a distribution. So once you are using a formula to work this out, you no longer get the power of putting in a distribution. I can, I can still randomize things for Monte Carlo, like I have done already with the variable. No, variable is a distribution. It was a 60-40 split uh, for, for randomization purposes, um, but you just you lose access to this column. Um, and then each column also has its uh, ability to have a formula, so I could also continue um, changing things if I wanted to in here. Um, but I'm not going to do that uh, in this uh, instance, but just for your awareness, you could just have a formula for every single column if you really wanted to. So things that you can do here as well, um, if you wanted to, do you remember where we mapped it in time, the dumper truck, to specific things over here? An alternative would actually have been to uh, not do this at all. So you should be able to just put it to fixed date and we'll just delete these dates. So we've removed it in time, but we could instead go back to our formula and then go to activity. So going, so this is our reference table. Uh, so we brought in a variable. We could actually now bring in some activities and say, um, actually we want 
that one, that one, and that one. So we've got activities three, four, and five. And you can see here it shows that they have a duration of 100. Um, so if you wanted to, you could start changing the, the, the way that you calculate price, um, as in a, like a per day price, if you wanted to, by using this method here. So you could say that there could be a times activity uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and see how it gets recognized. It changes color because it recognizes the symbol from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. You have to add dot. So there we are, duration. Double click that. There we go. square brackets. So square brackets around um, when you're defining um, a particular part of the schedule for the activity. So activity 030, but we just want the duration of it. So we're going to put the the, per, the square bracket or parentheses around that. Um, and so you then get 53,000 up here. Uh, I think you can also put There we are, 350,000. So 350,000 plus whatever's going on in here. So these points here, they're in the reference table, but they're not actually in the formula, so they don't contribute to the, the, work, the working out of that price there. Okay. If I remove the formula, I'd have to put this back to where it was in terms of the original 3000. Uh -huh. And then click around a bit until it updates itself. So that was an introduction to formulas. Uh, coming up next is the, the, the last kind of method of connecting schedule and time together. The, the schedule connection method. Um, but actually, if you really like what you were seeing with formulas and you're wondering, you've got questions buzzing around your mind, like can one part of the cost module reference another part of the module in, in terms of the formulas, then yes, it can. Um, and you, we cover that off in a bit more detail in video 20. So it's a little bit more in the advanced section of the, uh, the series here. Um, and I think also in that video, we, we also talk about uh, delay penalties and creating formulas for those kind of things as well. So you might be interested and skipping to that one. Okay, cheers.